Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business here on this Tuesday morning where we sit just 170 days, 11 hours, 46 minutes, and 15 seconds away from kickoff of the 2019 season. And thank you for joining this morning's edition of Don't Sleep on the Dallas Cowboys because you literally cannot sleep on the Dallas Cowboys. Things happen late in the evening, late at night, first thing in the morning, so you want to be up to speed with all that is America's team. Now, um, looks like TMZ or TM Sleaze finally got something they wanted. They finally got something on a Dallas Cowboy player. Unfortunately for them, it's not Zeke Elliott. But before we make judgment on this one, I say there's a couple of red flags here before we go ahead and condemn my man. And let me put out a warning out there for NFL players and owners who aren't uh, from Florida teams, you know, Jacksonville, Tampa Bay, uh, Miami Dolphins. You might not want to hang out in Florida. It seems like bad things happen to people. I mean, owners get busted in massage parlors, players get into brawl room fights, and so forth. It's kind of like it used to be Arizona. It seemed like players were always getting arrested out there. Now it seems like it's Florida. So try and stay away from Florida, maybe. You know, hit California or, you know, Gulf Coast. It's, I'm just saying, just, just watch your back there. But TMZ was reporting about five hours ago, middle of the night, that Tyrone Crawford was involved in a barroom brawl at Coyote Ugly, um, along with eight to ten others that really got, there was blood and guts, and, oh, no guts, but there was blood and everything else. But let me read exactly the way it's put out here. And I will say, let's hold judgment here because TMZ has a tape surveillance footage of the incident and so my question is tmz is always the first one out with video evidence how come they didn't put this out if it was incriminating my thoughts is there's nothing on the tape that says tyrone crawford did anything and they're trying to get the publicity for this before that comes out so let me read exactly what they put out there dallas cowboys defensive end tyrone crawford now here's what's amazing let's look at this how they put Tyrone Crawford, I don't know if you can read that, in red, okay, bold red lettering, okay, a defensive captain shoved and then capitalized T-W-O, two police officers, while they were trying to make an arrest during a brawl fight in Florida, TMZ has learned. Crawford was at the Coyote Ugly in Panama City on March 15 when things got violent around midnight. Sources tell us Crawford's crew had gotten into it the bar staff. The fight was epic in a bad way. Multiple people suffered bloody injuries, including bar staff. One employee suffered a broken foot in the melee. Cops raced to the scene and witnesses said eight to ten people were still fighting outside. And according to the police report obtained by TMZ, the report did not mention Crawford by name, uh, but we've spoken with witnesses who were adamant that Crawford was a key player in the incident. At one point, Crawford, six foot four, two hundred eighty-five pounds, bull rushed, bull rushed his way through two cops and aggressively put his hands on two officers, who were in the process of handcuffing one of the alleged combatants. Multiple cops swarmed Crawford and restrained him while pushing him away from the arrest scene. The incident involving Crawford was captured on the bar surveillance video and shows the scene play out clear as day. Despite the chaos, Crawford was not arrested. We reached out to Crawford and the Cowboys for comment, but so far, no word back from either camp. Okay. That's all we got. So that's where this is going to go. So it'll be funny how much this grows. Actually, it won't be funny. Because we've got people that are, you know, having domestic violence, that are beating their kids. The same child whose mother he beat three years ago, and that's kind of not talked about much. I'm going to be interested to see how big this gets blown up. Um, and it sounds like, who knows what happened. But Tyrell Crawford wasn't arrested, wasn't an arrest report or anything else. But the whole story, of course, is Tyrone Crawford. And I'm, I'm sure that he kind of went over to the police. And I, I, I really want to see the tape. I want to see the tape that he's over with the police. Hey, man, my guy didn't do anything. You know what I mean? 
but we'll see what happens where it is. I'm reporting it because, well, it's in the news. Whew. On to other news. Today, the Dallas Cowboys will be hosting Eric Berry. Eric Berry, um, who was diagnosed with um, Hodgkin's lymphoma and beat that in 2014, became the NFL comeback player of the year, uh, was a pro bowler that year, and has been a stellar safety in the NFL. The problem with Eric Berry, of course, is he's had basically three games in the last two seasons because of a heel injury. Nothing with the cancer. The cancer's gone. But in that time, he's had only 18 tackles. Um, Kansas City, which had he had been the highest paid safety in the NFL, let him go, signed Tyrone Matthews, and was interested in signing Earl Thomas as well, let him go. Thus far, you haven't heard about much interest for him. And he's looking basically for a deal that hopefully will get him back on the field that'll be a prove-it deal. So in my mind, we're talking about a one-year incentive-laden contract to get his feet wet. I don't know personally how the heel is, if the heel is healed, um, and so on. But I will say that the Cowboys have gotten players that have been injured before. Jalen Smith is a perfect example of a guy who we drafted in the second round who had first-round talent if healthy, and has shown that he's beyond first-round talent. Um, and their doctor basically said he will play again. So the Cowboys are really good at evaluating guys that have had some injuries. So we'll see what happens today with him. And since this is injury day, we also have Malik McDowell, who's coming in, who was a second-round draft pick in 2017 of the Seattle Seahawks, who was in an ATV accident, and uh, it was a serious accident. No word exactly what was injured, how it was injured, and what happened, but Seattle released him. And to give up on a second-round draft pick that early says quite a bit. So he's coming in for a visit today. We don't know what kind of shape he's in. We don't know if he'll be able to play, if the Cowboys will sign him or anything like that. This is just a visit. And this is on top of, of course, having Jordy Nelson, who came through yesterday and um, left without signing contract, as well as Clayton uh, Gathers. Clayton Gathers apparently is still talking now with the Colts, and the Colts are looking at possibly re-signing him. So that one may be a no-go. The thing that I'm happy about is the fact that the Cowboys are, aren't in a rush to just sign a guy just because we said we need a guy, we're going to grab him. To me, Landon Collins, the Redskins, pay too much. And a couple years down the road from now, we'll see the Redskins releasing uh, Collins because he didn't pan out the way they needed. He cost too much money and they're in cap hell. More times than not, that's what happens with a lot of big name free agents. We as fans get excited when we start thinking about, oh my God, we got that guy on our team in the off season. And you know, Jersey sales are going crazy through the roof, but rarely does it work out. And when you start thinking about the teams that are going through and they're grabbing all these players, Usually, it's the bottom of the barrel teams, with the exception of the Eagles. The Eagles, they've been pretty good with free agency, finding guys that fit a role, but they don't overspend either. But when you see the Jets, or the Browns, or the Redskins, or the Buffaloes, you're talking about teams that haven't won anything in a long time, going through and trying to do the quick fix. There is no quick fix in the NFL. The bottom line is you have to draft well. That gives you th a four to five years to have a guy in your system that he's not going to cost you a fortune. And you have to continue to draft well. That's the one thing you can look at the Cowboys and say, they have drafted well in comparison to most teams since the 2010 season. They have built this team through homegrown talent through the draft, not through free agency. They've added some guys and they found some diamonds in the rough. And Antoine Woods, who had three tackles before coming to Dallas, ends up with 34 and a sack and a half. They found players on the down low that we as fans haven't been excited when we signed them, but play valuable roles to the team. And you have to understand that football is not about having one or two great guys. 
it's about having 30 to 40 really good guys. So when one guy goes down, that other people are able to fill in. And that's what we have to get into our mind. So we'll see what the day holds. We'll find out more about Tyrone Crawford and the bar incident, I'm sure, all day long. Um, I'm sure TMZ will be posting some more stuff. And if the video is incriminating, we know TMZ will put it up. I'm Mark Holmes, and I will see you guys soon.